I've got the final version at this point of my APK file. In order, in order for us to get this to people, if we go look at the developer.android.com portal, we've got, remember, design, develop, distribute. We've got a whole section on the distribute portion of things about how do you get this to people. And if we were to go to look, go to look at it, we would see that we have basically two or three ways. We could, because that's our app, we could send this file to people. I could attach this on an email and send it to all my friends and family. Here's my app. But we will have to then explain to them how to install it, how to sideload it, and none of our non-techie friends are going to be able to do that, even if we send them detailed instructions, because then their version of their Android device is slightly different than the instructions you gave them, and then they won't be able to do it. So that's not very feasible. Distributing it via email. That's one way to get our app to people. Again, people are not going to be tech-savvy enough to install it. Another way to get this app to people is, well, we can make a website. We can create a website, upload it to our website, set up a whole system, uh, and have people download it. But the problem is the same thing. They're going to need to be tech-savvy enough to go to the developer screen and then turn off uh, whatever they, we have to do in there and activate developer and then copy it over to the memory card and all of that. Again, side-loading the app. Uh, to have people do that, people are going to think, you're trying to put a virus on my, on my phone. Why am I getting this off of your website instead of a real app store? So really, the only legitimate way you're going to get this to people is through an app store, to a, a vetted app store that everyone is used to and everyone uses. So on my Android device, right on the home screen, it's got Google Play. It's the app store. Get apps there. If I've got an Amazon device, I have the Amazon App Store. If I've got an iPhone, I've got the iTunes App Store. All of the official app stores is where I'm going to get my apps. Yes, techie people could figure out how to get your app from whatever way you distribute it to them. But regular people want it straight from the official location. So for the moment, I'm going to close command prompt. I'm done with that. I'm going to kind of close a few files here. And I will then uh, go ahead and open your web browser, and we'll go to we'll go to the website developer.android.com. Just still calling it Android and Developer Preview, even though we all know it's actually titled Nougat. Android N is Nougat. So we've got Design, Develop, Distribute, and at the top right corner, we've got Developer Console. Go ahead and click Developer Console at the top right corner. It'll ask us to log in. Let's pause right here. We're not going to go further than this. This is uh, if we've got a developer's account, we sign in. We don't have one yet, so it'll ask us to sign up. It'll ask us for an email and all of that. And then at a certain point, it'll ask us, okay, please take out your credit card and pay $28. $28 is not that expensive, but I'm not going to force any of us to buy a developer account at Google. What we're going to do is we're going to go over to another legitimate app store, developer.amazon.com. Amazon has its own app store has its own Android App Store to reach Amazon devices and every other Android device. One of the big draws about Amazon's totally free. Not even the $28. And $28 is not that expensive. That's like a nice pizza. But with Google, this is one way, very low bar, how they keep out spam. Over on the iTunes or App Apple side, it's $99 per year to have a developer's account to sell your apps or give them away. You still have to pay to be a developer on iOS. On Google, you have to pay if you're going to sell your apps or give them away, but it's $28 one-time fee. It's not a complicated process, but I'm not going to go through this process. I'm going to go through the process of Amazon because 
it's free to set it up. There's nothing to, to, to pay for as a developer at all. We can set this up, we'll do it right now, and then we'll be ready to start to upload our apps. So this is what I'm going to, to set up, and this is what I'm going to teach at the moment. And what we do here will be very, very, very similar over for, for, for Google, but then there will be a step that says take out your credit card and pay for your developer's account. So let's go to developer.amazon.com and at the top right corner click sign in or create account. If you have some Amazon account that you already have, you can use it. I'm going to set this up as a new account. And again, I'm making this up completely. It'll let me do this. This is not going to be a real account, but I will be able to publish an app. So I'm just going to make this up. John Smith at johnsmith.com. Whatever. I should write this down because I want to use it later. creating a new account sign up it'll ask me for my name so I'm making this up but this would be the name of me as a developer we're going to see as we go through the process we can give away our apps or we can sell our apps 99 cents and up so we will be generating we could be generating income out of this I create an app from what I learned in these classes and then I could start to sell it on Google Play or Amazon App Store or iTunes etc so we will be generating income we'll see how that's all set up when we get to it but then I'm going to fill this part in password Then I've got a bunch of things to fill out. I've got profile info, app distribution agreement, payments. So pretty self-explanatory. We'll be doing something like this for Google Play. So first name, last name, email, phone number required. Um, an extra step, and this can be changed later, but an extra step that you could do is uh, you can go over to Google Voice googlevoice.com, whatever it is, you can get a free phone number with Google Voice. Uh, if you don't want to put your real phone number, you have to go through those steps though. I'm going to see if I can make up a phone number here. Fax number is optional. Thankfully, it's no longer 1987. Developer name or company. Again, you write whatever you want here, you're a company. You don't have to go through a process of really creating a real company, getting a business license and a merchant account and you know, uh, tax ID and all of that. You don't have to go through all of that process to become a real app developer. As soon as you write this down, you're one. You're a developer. And so I think here I've made up J. Smith Apps LLC. Sure. Developer description is optional, but if we were doing this legitimately, we have up to 4,000 characters to write something about our company, and I would write something here eventually, and what I would do is, I would, um, you know, perhaps get inspiration from an existent uh, developer, you know, I could go into, look up the a real developer, so you know, Angry Birds developer from Rovio. I can go in there and read the, whatever they wrote about themselves somewhere here. But the point of creating this developer's description is to create trust that you are a real developer 
selling or giving away a real app, give us real money for it, 4,000 characters. So it's optional. I'll fill it in later. Address required. Uh, if you don't want to put a real address here, you would have to take the steps, for example, to use a P.O. box. Actually, this would be a good idea to write some notes on, so I'm going to write some notes. Notes on setting up a developer account. The app stores. You don't need a real business license, etc. You are a developer and you sign up. Fill in all items truthfully if you will use it legitimately. For our educational purposes, I'm going to make it all up. Truthfully. Advice on phone. Get a Google Voice number. They're free. If you don't want to put a real phone number, you get a Google Voice, you put that in, you're done. Advice on address. What do they call it? Uh, yeah, it's like home address or street address. This one's not free. Get a P.O. Box. You can go to the post office, postal annex, whatever, get a P.O. Box. And you've got some place to get this sort of correspondence if you want, don't want to put your real address. Uh, prices of this range all over the place. At the post office that I go to, it's like $70 a year, which, you know, is $70 but it could be a business expense. And I'm not qualified to give uh, business and tax advice. You need to check with the tax person. But um, you can uh, possibly write some of these off as business deductions and such. But for the moment, I'll put in some address. So city, state, zip are all required. Then these are all optional. Customer support email, customer support phone, customer support website. Depending how legitimate you want to be, you can fill this in or not. If I want to be very legitimate, to have people trust me to download my apps and pay for them, I should fill all of this in. What's the email address that people can send an email to you for tech support? So recommended, add a tech support email. You could go to Hotmail or Yahoo Mail, whatever, and make up an email address there and plug it in here. Sure. But so can any spammer. So a more legitimate email address, you know, something like um, help at yourwebsite.com. Not to get an address, an email address with your own domain on it, you have to go pay for it. Yes, there are these free ones that you can get out there. I don't bother with them because oftentimes, because they're free, everyone wants them, then they're slow, they might be full of ads. Worst case scenario, they're, they've got spam. So yes, if you've got a free email address that looks like a real address, great, use it. But I've usually had bad experiences with those. Again, this is not free. This getting a getting an email and then where it says about a customer support website. Customer website. Get a website like you know your website.com, which is also not free. But you usually get it as a bundle, the website and the email, ranging anywhere between twenty to a hundred and twenty dollars a year. Oftentimes I see this at around seventy dollars a year. So more more that you have to pay for. I'm gonna make it all up. It's optional at the moment actually so I'll skip it. 
but if I want to look legitimate, I would fill that in. So pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to save and continue. That'll take me to number two, app distribution agreement. This is a huge contract that you agree to if you click accept, but it just goes on to tell you with all of these addendums and such what you will and will not use the app store for. You will not make you know fake apps to steal people's credit card numbers and you will not copy someone else's app and make it as your own and you will do this and that and so forth. And then at a certain point it tells you here about royalty. Any apps that you create and publish, you will get 70% of the list price. So I did say that, app, that Amazon does not charge you for the developer's account. However, it does take 30% of the sale of your app. So does iTunes, so does Google Play, so does the Windows Store. They all take some payment for that. So if I'm selling a 99 cent app, I'm going to get about 70 cents out of it. They take 30 cents because it takes money for this infrastructure for this global infrastructure that can reach 200 countries in the world for your app to reach everyone in the world it takes money to keep the lights on to keep the servers running so they take 30 percent if you're selling if you're giving your apps away for free well they're getting 30 percent of zero but if you're selling it 99 cents at a time or whatever they're going to take a few cents off of that yes what if you have in-app purchases are they able to that. Yeah, they take some amount of their, uh, it might be that 30% or uh, some other fee somewhere if we look through in here. So they do take in-app purchases, but that's a couple of the ways we can make apps, I mean, money off of our apps. How you profit from your apps. Charge up front. 99 cents, for example, to download. So you're going to get rich 99 cents at a time or in-app purchase. Usually that is free to download, pay for more features. Let's say we had developed a game. We make a cool little Tetris clone or something, and we give it away for free. And then we set it up so that if someone wants to get the special, you know, long block, 99 cents, and then they're going to pay to get that extra piece, DLC and such. That's one way to make money off your app. Another way is ads. Free to download. Ads feature during app usage. Someone's using your app and an app appears either at the bottom or at the top or in the middle or somehow uh, apps appear on your on your I mean ads appear on your app and if a person clicks on it either accidentally or not you can profit off of that we have to look up how much do you get out of it and, and all of that but that's one way and Amazon now just Amazon has this other way which is what do we call it? We call it underground. Amazon underground. This is free to download. You're paid based on usage of your app. Length of time that people are using your app, you could get paid for that from Amazon. I don't believe Google does that at the moment. But that's another incentive to go with Amazon. No fee to set it up. I could be profiting from my free apps. Um, this way, the longer someone uses my app. We will see when we get to that point. It's a little bit of a setup to, to, to set up the Amazon Underground. We'll get to that. So, yep, you have to check on that. Here we go, the, the per minute rate. As people use it, you can make as much as 0 0.0020 cents as people use your app. 
Anyway, yes, yeah, sounds good. I'll accept it. If you don't like any of that, cancel it, and then you cannot use the Amazon App Store. Here it asks, do you plan to monetize by charging apps or selling in-app items, in-app purchases, yes or no? Do you plan to monetize apps by displaying ads, yes or no? If I were to select yes, it's going to then ask me to fill in a bunch of information of a bank. You need to get paid, well they need your bank information. Uh, if you know anything about business and such, there's a kind of an account called a merchant account that you you can get paid through. Not necessary for this. You can put in your own personal checking account and you will get paid into it. You will be generating income and whenever you generate any income in the US basically it's going to be taxed. Again, I'm not a tax professional but I'm telling you any income technically even when you were selling that stuff on you know uh, Craigslist technically it's income technically you should be reporting it. I won't turn you in. But this is asking, uh, are you going to sell your items? Yes or no? Um, I don't have my information to fill in at the moment. I can set this up later. But notice what it's going to ask you. The name of your bank, you, the person, the routing number to the bank, what's the actual account number? Yes, you're going to be giving your le legitimate bank information to Amazon. Yes, they are a legitimate company for you to do that. I won't do it at the moment. Are you going to monetize with ads if you select the yes there? Again, put in your bank info to collect your payment. I'll do it later. So I'll save. There we go. I'm an Amazon app developer. I've got my portal, my dashboard right here to, to uh, start to publish my, my apps. Uh, I have updates about the uh, about the system documentation for me to read notice at the top documentation uh, I don't have any apps at the moment that I've published I can go get support check the downloads and my monetization and all of that it's all here within my my dashboard. I get back to it at developer.amazon.com. A very similar process would follow at Google Play. A similar process would follow at Apple App Store. All the app stores have something like this. The other ones, they're going to ask for a payment at some point. Uh, this one, it's free. They will take their cut based on your sale of your app and in app purchases and all of that. Any questions up to this point? Let's take our last break when we come back. Okay, we're, we've got an app store account. We've got an app. Let's then talk about starting to create a listing to publish our app. It's 8.35. We'll take a 10-minute break. And at 8.45, we'll start to publish our app.